Okay, so this is the Navy um, viewed through its enterprise data model. And the different colors correspond to different communities of people who collect their data in different ways. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can communicate with people whose data are captured in a different color. But usually you don't want to communicate with those people anyway. But one day you might want to communicate and then you might find that there are difficulties because those people seem to use the same terms that you use, but they have different meanings. And now experts in each color know the meanings of the terms that they use and they can live very successful lives within their color zone. But then when you need to build a really complicated model, which stretches across several color zones, then you may have problems. How do you get the ontology to perform this magic of being used to tag across all the content of every SysML model, for instance? Well, you have an ontologist in the room. When a SysML model is being built, the ontologist is informed of which terms are being used. Either they are already in the ontology with good definitions, in which case, they, the term is used automatically, or they are not already in the ontology, in which case the ontologist needs to find a way of adding them correctly, or they are in the ontology with a different definition, and then you have a real problem which only the ontologist can solve. And if the ontologist is not in the room, then the SysML model may very well have some kind of defect, which may not be noticed and may lead to all kinds of problems down the road. Then you also get the ability to navigate through your data in very coherent and sensible ways. So this is a navigation of a kind through some of the content of the integrated dictionary, showing how the different parts of the integrated dictionary are connected together. Part of this presentation was motivated by conversations I was having with Jim Chiachia. Forgive me, Jim, if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, and this is one of the questions that he and I were considering. So can we use ontologies not to tag data in the way that I just described, but also to bring about more successful and more effective communication strategies within a large organization? I'm now going to show that you can do that. In fact, that's really what's involved when we have the ontologist in the room. The ontologist is there to ensure the people who need to communicate are communicating successfully because they have the same meanings for the same term. This is an intriguing question. Um, so I would say the largest is the world of biological information driven, which means genomics, proteomics, and so forth driven research. It's a huge industry, which, which probably includes all drug companies, all large university hospitals, and all genomics, molecular biology, and similar departments in university. So it's not one organization, it's many organizations, but they all work together in practice because of the gene ontology. It's become a kind of organizational glue that people no longer need necessarily be aware of for the glue to do its work. And that's the vision I have also for the Navy. I do not want people in the Navy to know that they are working with an ontology. It's only a very few, few people who need to be aware of this fact. Uh, if the ontology is well built and is doing its purpose, it should be invisible. It's like most drivers don't need to know how uh, an engine works. So I don't think there's a limit in size. I don't think that I think a very, very large organization could be uh, such that it has organizational knowledge because of an ontology. Uh, independently of how large it gets, because this is not something which has to be in each individual brain. It has to be in organizational structures, data structures.